Hey guys, and welcome back to another X Plane 11 Tolis A319 live stream. So, um, yeah, the aircraft has released today. It released about. Uh, what time did it release? About 6 o'clock. Maybe just a bit before then. And, um, yeah, like I said, it's come out today. And it's not looking too bad. So, this time I am not joined by um, Matt. So, if I quickly restart my um, lure quickly. There we go. So, yeah, this time I'm not joined by him. And they'll be flying from Anchorage to Saint Something Bay. I cannot remember the airport's name. Bear with me a second. So yeah, we're flying from Anchorage to Provin Providenia Bay Airport. Flight time will be about two hours fourteen, and um, yeah, things aren't looking too bad for today. So uh, yeah, let's go straight into the aircraft, straight into the cockpit, and let's get everything setting up, ready for the flight. Okay, everything's just coming across live now, so that should be fine. So over to the top. So first things first, turn on the uh, batteries for the aircraft and start up the external power. So aircraft is now sorted out. So again, I'm not way near the best Airbus pilots in the world. I will say that right now. I just went for a quick crash course on how to start this thing up. So I do apologize for my quick error, but um, fingers crossed that shouldn't be the case today. So, um, yeah, let's get everything set up and ready to go. So, those come on. Those can be armed. All lights are off. So, we'll now align the, whoops, align the IRS. So, that's one. That's two. Wait for that light to come off as well. And then that should be three. Cool. So, the IRS is now aligned. So, at least it's now aligning. That'll take about eight minutes in the Airbus. So, what I will now do is head over to the FMC. And start plugging that in. So it's up brightness. And let's get going. So initialization. We are flying from let's get the ICA code. So it's um pank to UHMD. Pank slash UHMD. Whoops, um not us airport. She finds so of course you slow up the X plan, so it's um pank. Uh, what's wrong with the edges of the CFM engines? Um, there you go, hang on, we load it up. Um, bear with me. What's wrong with the edges of the CFM engines? I don't spot anything wrong just yet. If you spot anything wrong, do let me know and I'll be happy to forward that to the um, developers behind the aircraft. But I don't see anything wrong with the engines just yet. And then um, yeah, find the A319 ACJ owned by a company. I don't remember the name of I do apologise. So, um, right, back to the cockpit quickly. Let's go back to the um, FMC. So, alternative airport will be Pank. So, if we don't make it, we'll be returning here. Flight number, we are uh, Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel Delta, VHVHD. Cost next is going to be 20. With our cruise at 36,000. Cool, line RS. Then that'll take about uh, seven minutes to align. Now head over to Perth. Let's now go for. Oh no, uh, the apologies flight plan first. So we go Pank, departure. And if we depart on. Actually, we can get the VAT sim. That'd be useful, actually. Should we do that now? So if I quickly switch over to. I wish we do that. Basically, so I just don't show my um, details. So that's connect. Now on that sim and that that dark color. Um, I'll forward it to the uh, developers if you want and see if they say anything about it. But I'm sure the dark colors are meant to be there. Let's bring the sim back on view there. Um, cool. Yeah, I'm sure the engines are meant to look like that. It's probably just part of the shadow. But um, like I said, I'll forward it to the developers and then they can have a look into it for you. Anyways, back to the um, FMC. So, sex A departure. Oops, I can't type today. Hang on. Cool. 
cool. Dot W X. And uh, nothing. Cool. So winds are. Cool. Right. So um, wind shouldn't be a problem for me. Departure on any runway should be fine. So if I just set it up for that, so any runway will do, which in my case, closest runway, because I am in the private jet area, the executive section. So if we look for a runway, that one's not too far away. So if we depart on runway 25 left. Yeah, cheers, um, Lucas. Glad you like it. So 25 left. And we'll say no sit for now. Uh, fits. Do we have a sit for that? Yes, we do actually. So if we insert that. And then that should be the flight plan sorted. Scroll down to the bottom to get rid of any discrepancies. There are no discrepancies at all. So that is perfect for me. So now we head over to Perf and set this information up. So plugins, TOLIS, open ICIS screen, the interactive simulation control system, aircraft config. So we need 10,419. 10,419 of fuel. Perfect. Quick refuel. We'll use two degrees of flaps. So we know that's information, which I've already done before stream, which I saw said, so 0264, that's perfect. Uh, speeds are fine as well. So that's that. Quick that ground side, so doors are quickly close all that now. In fact, maybe that outside, okay, can't change views whilst in the screen. So yeah, quick close all the exits. And then quick head outside, so back to you. Close that. And... Um, Go back to the FMC. So V1 is 129. Rotate is 150. V2 is 152. Uh, transition attitude will be US 18,000. Flaps are 2 slash 0 0.2. And flex temp is 64. So plug that in. Uh, hit the, hang on, I need to go back to that quickly, hit the right arrow, so zero fuel index is going to be 25 slash 10, oh no, sorry, slash 51.1, <laughs> oh yeah, unlucky Lucas, um, your choice, I mean, a lot of people can't even put in the argument, uh, Tolis or, um, Flight Factor, that's quite the um, argument going on right now between the uh, community. So wait for that to cool down, and then I think that's probably a better chance to make a purchase for it. So block is ten for ten thousand kilos of fuel. We are doing this in kilos, not pounds, since this is just how I got the aircraft set up. So um, yeah, that's all sorted out. Flight plan is all set. FMC is now sorted. Sorry, um, MCDU this is an Airbus. So um, next thing I now need to do is the let me make sure the sounds are all working fine they are not go back to properties can you guys hear the airplane if you can i do apologize just being a little bit quiet as the engines go on i'm sure it'll get a bit louder so if i should quickly do that for now so um next things next is the lights make sure that's all set correctly as well so strobe set to auto Beacons not yet. Snav set to one. Arms on on. That's all fine. That will do. So next thing is the fuel pump. So it's on the centre ones. Then the right ones. Then the left ones. And at this time we'll now start up the APU. So set the master switch. We'll then wait for the door in the back to open. The hatch to open. So if we now turn on the um, radios. And then turn up the brightness of my displays. So that can go up. That can go up. And finally, it's these two. There you go. Flaps now opened. So the AP can come to life. <laughs> well played. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the aircraft. Do hope you enjoy it. 
mean, it's not too bad. It's, again, it's an Airbus. I'm not really an Airbus pilot, but I'm not going to complain too much about it. So um, there you go. IS line two minutes. That's all set. TCAS standby. That is fine. There you go, AP is now starting up. Um, how much FPS? At the moment, I am currently getting a total of 40 frames per second. 40 FPS right now. Although this is not my PC right now. This is on my brother's, who's the um, Tolis repainting guy. Anyways, uh, that's all set up. Map is not available. That'll be available in a minute. So the APU now started. I can now turn off. Whoops, uh, generate. Not generate, sorry. I need to turn on the bleed. And now bring the um, APU on. And then now this is available. I will turn off the external power. And that flash means it's transferred systems. And if I now disconnect the ground services, that comes off. And there'll be no requirement for pushback since I am in this little corner of the airport. On what settings? I'm running uh, medium high, medium high at the moment. Right, so AP is now running, meaning at this point I can now turn on the engines to get ready to go. So, strobe will turn on. So, no, set that's auto, so uh, beacon I need on. And let's now start up the engine. So, engine 2 can now start. Quickly brighten up these displays as well. I and mean, I'm not going to really look at them, but just in case. How much FPS do you get while flying through clouds? I don't think that really affects the simulator, at least not this one. So uh, about the same, I'd say. Anyways, engine 2 should now be starting up. I've more than likely made a mistake. I do apologise. There you go, engine starts, engine two. Now the engine is starting up. Again, I do apologize, this is not my usual aircraft of choice to fly. So engine two is now starting up. Which I'm on 122.8 Unicom, which is fine. And then once engine 2 starts up, I'll hear a click. There we go, that's the click I'm looking for. So now that engine 2 has started up, I can now do the same for engine 1. So that'll go up. There's the uh, dog bark, now that the um, fuel pumps and hydraulics are now coming to life in the aircraft. Ah, right, okay, no worries, like, again, this isn't my normal system, but uh, I'll probably change the uh, description to set it all up later. There you go, engine one is now starting up. That's all fine. Flight director is armed, so we should then be ready to go once the um, engine what engine one starts up. We turn the brightness of this whilst I'm at it. And take that on flight, on um, F plan, there we go. Cool, so both engines have started. APU comes off, bleed comes off. Pushing that the other way around, but hey. And there you go, our F319 has now come to life. So taxi's not too bad, it's just four attacks way around, make a left and then hit the runway. So we head back into the aircraft. I don't think there's any other guys in the area, so we go to Squawk Box. Go to show you who's online. Uh, we've got an Anchorage approach, Anchorage tower, and an ATIS at the airport. Get rid of that. Uh, can I show you the sharklets? Does the airplane have sharklets? Does it have sharklets? Yes. <laughs> there you go. So if I we go over to that. Hang on. 
engine type. There we go. Wings of the shark. Look, so if I toggle that. Ah, there we go. If I quickly do that, these are CFM engines. So there's your shark looks in the aeroplane. There we go. Free camp. There it goes. Yeah, these sharks are actually quite a late addition to the aircraft. I mean, I don't think. It was like a 50 50 if he's going to actually get released with the aircraft or not. It was like a last minute thing they decided to include it with the add on, and they don't look too bad. They do look quite good. And they do fit the model. You can see there's no like visual kind of change between the wing or anything. And they do look good. Yes, that's him I'm yelling at. He's in the uh, room just next to me. And if I need any quick like last minute helpers, then I can just quickly shout across to him. So, uh, yeah, swing it back to normal. And let's just now actually taxi to the runway. So make sure everything is all set. Q and H will be. Okay, so the weather. That's looking good. That will do. So um yeah, so now taxi to the runway. Screen now turn off the parking brake. Turn on TCAS as well. Whoops, wrong switch on that one. And let's now taxi to the runway. So they got actually starting to roll already, as the aircraft can basically taxi on idle power, which is a feature of the A319 being quite lightweight and small. So if I bring the throttle up just a tiny bit, and make our way down to runway 125 um, left. Goes to normal, sorry, and um, I need to turn on the taxi lights. So if I do that, there we go. So I make a right turn here. I just get to the main part of the airport because, as like I said earlier, I'm starting the um, executives part of the airport. This being a private aircraft, so at this part of the airport, there aren't too many um, aircraft in the area. So take off, auto brake set to max. We set this thing up as well. Um, please contact me on 118.3. Do not respond via private message. Use frequency instead. Cool. So, um, let's quickly do that. Make sure I'm connected to 12118.3. And quickly hold here whilst I talk to Tower. Uh, right, so Anchorage Tower, information Romeo wins one zero one of the one, visual system that's fine. Cool, so um in fact if I quickly hold here, so I should talk to Tower and get the uh, takeoff stuff clearance. So now I need to get clearance for um the departure to gosh I have to try and pronounce the airport name, aren't I? Tower, this is Vo Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel Delta, ready to copy at, um, and, uh, I actually don't know if I can hear him or not, because the setup's audio, I'm not sure if it's correct, so that's fine, that's fine, voice is fine, that's fine. Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel Delta, Roger, you're cleared to the Providence Bay Airport via radar vector. Climb and maintain 15,000. Expect flight level 360, one zero 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 departure. If 
departure frequency is 118.6 with Anchorage departure and block 5731. Cool, so um, one thing we'll double check is the uh, flight plan out. Oops, no, not you, I want you. Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel Delta is um, cleared to um, Providenia Bay via the um, Fitz Zulu Free Departure Squawk Seven Three um, Three What Set Five Seven Three One Departure on One One Eight Point Six Cleared to One Thousand Five Hundred Fifteen Hundred Sorry, gosh, that was a bit of a mess up. <laughs> Hopefully you got that. Just Victor Hotel Delta, is that correct? Expect runway 33 before departure. Advise you have information. Someone call me when ready for taxi. Of course, we have to give me the um, other runway. So if I quickly go back on that, arise. So I need runway three three on that departure. Insert. Cool, and I'm going cleared to 1500. So if I set that onto you. Hey, he said he was um, read that correct. So I'll happily take that. And then he said the parts to taxi to free free. Which I'm actually not sure where it is. So if we go and find it. That will be. That's free free there. So. Yeah, it's a fairly simple taxi. It's just a cross. I can do that. So, pine break now come off again. And let's taxi to the uh, runways again. So, tower to come to me a bit later. Which is more than fine. So, let's now carry on our taxi to runway. So one thing to see, I am more of a Boeing pilot to an Airbus pilot, so one thing I do need to be wary of is the fact that the landing gear is behind me and not below me, so my overhang going to be a little bit more than the 737. So at this point I should be alright. Let's make a right turn here. Sounds for thinking for... Um, Personally, I don't think the sounds are too bad. I mean, fair enough, there could be one or two tweaks in here, but I don't think the sounds are too bad, personally. I guess at the end of the day, that is more down to opinion. So, it's one thing I can't really comment on, but, um, no, I personally don't think they're too bad. <laughs> it sounds like an Airbus, so it does its job to me. Right, so I know it's a left hand coming up here. Bring that the throttle to Tiny bit, so I don't go too fast. Get that down to two. Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel Delta. I don't believe I give you a taxi clearance yet, but you're cleared to cross 07 right. Echo, cleared to cross 07 left. Full short of runway 33 and kilo. I do apologize. Cleared to cross um, 25 left and taxi to runway 33. Uh, Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel Delta. So should you get this or the Flight Factor 320 the sound pack? Um, I don't personally own the Flight Factor 320, so unfortunately that's something I can't personally um, do the judgement on. But um, at the end of the day, that's again down to your opinion. I think how it's looking at the moment, it depends. Do you want to fly an A319 or do you want to fly an A320? Now I think the other thing that's starting to come out of this is, do you have a lot of money or not? If not, then... I think the people using the uh, A319 by Tolis, like the the poor man's um, A320, 
That seems to be the um, thing at the moment. Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel Delta. Okay, never mind, you're good. <laughs> He's been sitting on golf cross here, seven left, hole 32. Roger that. Clear to cross and hold short of Kilo, um, Victor Hotel Delta. Uh, it's quite like jar design or worse. Um, again, I don't have the jar design, but I think the quality wise jar design, I think this one's a uh, much higher level too. I think it's like nine pounds more, nine dollars more expensive, but um, a lot higher quality in that aspect. All right, so I'm holding at Kilo, which is this one here. So if I make a left turn now. And then I'll be ready to depart again. Clear to 150. 1500, sorry. Not in the US. Transition to 18,000. See, like a left turn here. And Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel Delta. William Zero, our correction. Three five zero at eleven knots. Fly runway heading runway three three. Clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff. Um, Victor Hotel Delta. Runway three three. Cool. So we've now got our takeoff clearance. So if you now like the runway, get that sorted, and we will now be ready to go. So if that's been set, all that's been set. We turn the ta takeoff lights. So those come on. A right turn, and now I've got my speeds. So it's 150 rotate, the one's at 127. There we go. So now let's swap the engines, and it's the second click I need. Hold those down. Five. Ones pass, rotate. Positive climb, gear up. Fly around my heading. Flaps can now come up by one as well. And there we go, flaps can now come up. So if we hold the aircraft at runway heading, and just a moment to then go on to our course heading to our first waypoints, and now we have the departure sorted. And there we go, so every chance team has now departed, and things aren't looking too bad for us. Yeah, Victor Hotel Delta, contact, departure now 118.6, have a great flight, sir. 118.6 for Victor Hotel Delta, thank you very much. So now go to 118.6. This is Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel Delta with you at flight level at um, 2,500, heading for 1,500 feet. Here we go, it's Hotel Delta, departure rate of contact. About 50 miles northwest of the Aegis Airport, climbing. It's like 360 degrees to the right, bit intersection. Alright, so now passing through 4,000. There you go, things aren't looking too bad again. This is essentially my first time flying an A320 without any help behind it. Something I'm, because, again, as I keep saying, I'm not a boat Airbus pilot, I'm more of a Boeing pilot. So, like Airbus I said, I did a Mark quick crash course on um, how to fly this aircraft. 
And fingers crossed it's enough for me to do this stream today without any fuss. At least too much fuss. So we're now stable, that's 250 knots. Pass through 7000. Have a look at some of the um, external visuals of the aircraft as we do climb through Alaska. Flight time about 2 hours 14 for today. And for me, landing will be at about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. There we go, so now it's um, 11,000, which means landing lights can now come off. Paris Victor, Hotel Delta, Anchorage, departure, d Um, Victor Hotel Delta, I can read you Anchorage. Victor Hotel Delta, Roger, radar contact your current lead. 18 miles west of the Anchorage Airport, climbing a flight level 360 clear direction to the intersection. Um, flight to 360 and um, for the intersection, Victor Hotel, Victor Hotel, Delta. So now we can give an hour for full um, altitude. Roger, so those are going to be managed to the West Coast terminated route to change your advisor from the injury. Is it approved? Monitor unit coming out 122.8 in a safe flight. Um, 122.8, Unicom, thank you very much. Have a good day. So now on Unicom. And then we'll be sitting here for the rest of the flights. So there we go. Departure done. <laughs> Very, probably here a few mistakes here and there, one or two. But at the end of the day, it works. So let the aircraft um, do the rest.
there go. So carry on our right turn now to reach the um, Everts point. And then we'll continue our climb to 360. So we've had, again, we're now on Unicom. And then Taui behind us for a bit. So, uh, yeah, how are you guys doing right now? A few people watching the stream. How are you guys doing? And again, I mean, if I do have the Tose 319 now, I mean, like, as I always say, I'm far from the best Airbus pilot in the world, but now that I have a decent quality Airbus, maybe it is worth at least trying it for the first time. At least see where I can get with it. But um, no, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's getting there. So now passing through 215. I have to say the scenery's looking too bad as well as we um, fly through Alaska. We've got the mountains and the surroundings. Quite nice stuff to look down at. And hopefully our approach into Provenunia Bay should also give you some quite nice sceneries and visuals as you come into land. But uh, flying through Alaska, let's go for the passenger window for a bit, shall we? I've got the passengers couldn't see on board. One thing actually worth saying, I've just remembered, is that tomorrow, whoops, tomorrow in fact, is actually the 6th anniversary for Microsoft Flight. Who remembers that glorious simulator? So um, yeah, tomorrow is the 6th anniversary of Microsoft Flight. And um, yeah, with that I hope you do plan to get a few videos out as well for that. But um, yeah, so for now it's totally safe for 19. This is now out on the um, xplane.org store for $69, about £50 in the UK. And um, yeah, that'll be uh, this for today. But if for those inter still interested in Microsoft Flight, what a glorious simulator it was. Yeah, that's the um, sixth anniversary for it tomorrow, released 29th of February 2012. Should make it first of March this year. Again, any questions as well, feel free to ask, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, right, so how do you get rid of the ugly blue cockpit colour? Basically, um, there's an enhancement pack out on the xplane.org forum and um, basically download that and I believe there are three different cockpit colours? Five different cockpit colours you can choose from and then that'll let you basically uh, choose between the different cockpits within the aircraft. Um, is it FPS training? Uh, not too sure, none of the like dev testers really commented on FPS issues. So yeah, it's about the same as the um, A3, the 737 with the um, Zybo mod, Zybo, Zybo, however you pronounce it. But um, yeah, it's about the same as that, so not too draining at all, not really. And it can run on a fair number of systems from high end to low end. And um, later on in the flight we may also test out a waypoint skip feature which I've just been told about and that hasn't actually been tested yet. 
which is something that probably should have been tested before release, but um, we'll see how that goes. It might even send us into the middle of Doha as it did a few times, or at least that was a safe function before they fixed it. But um, yeah, that'll be something I would look into a little bit later when it comes to the need for it. But um, can you send a link to the cockpit colour? Cool, um, I'll get the uh, texture guy who does the um, aircraft, I'll get him put a link in the uh, chat for you. So a few seconds, he should give you a link for the um, enhancement pack. So have you bought the um, A319 yourself now while you try to try and fly it out yourself or you like think of buying it in the next couple of uh, minutes or so? What's your connection with the um, A319? There you go, so the um, link to the enhanced pack is now in the uh, chat, feel free to use that. So yeah, you want to buy it, you just need to save up some money. Like I said, um, once a storm comes down between the flight factory and the TOLIS, which again, people aren't realising is technically the same model, the same developers behind it, just like a little breakaway from that. But um, yeah, again, once a storm comes down and people like, realise which aircraft they prefer to have, then um, yeah, <laughs> six inches of snow in your garden, we've got about... Two or three at the moment. It's been snowing heavy in London as well. Something that's not happened for a long time, let me tell you that. But there, no, things aren't looking too bad. A little bit turned, actually, I have to say. It's definitely giving the aircraft a bit of a uh, shake in the um, air, but it's not too bad. It's the aircraft handling it quite nicely. Have a good outside as well. So we're now very close to the um, Arctic Circle as we are heading to the northwest for Provindinia Bay in Russia. But welcome stream Edwin, how are you doing today? And uh, let's actually have a quick walk around the um, cockpit cabin as well. Because that's something that did have like a small modification. Right, let's so quickly walk down the uh, cab, shall we? The cabin for the uh, aircraft. Let's leave our seat. Let's leave the cockpit door open, just in case. And there we go. So um, as you can see, the Lufthansa Bre um things have been removed because of uh, licensing rights and that kind of stuff. Uh, the floor has been modified so now it looks like someone, as it does on an aircraft, they've actually like, spilled their drinks and stuff all over it and that's a bit of a rough carpet. Uh, the actual um, inside bit here is still the same, not too bad. There you go, you got your flat coffee maker because Airbus couldn't afford the real one. And then if we also go back as well, the trip hazard, as I called it, the bit of the landing gear that's stuck out the bottom has also now been cleared up, which is making things look a lot nicer. Here's the uh, super leg room um, area, which to be fair, left a few people complaining about the facts that the seating layout wasn't correct. Um, how's the Aeros compared to this? Uh, well, first of all, they're completely different simulators, FSX slash P3D to an X-11. Systems-wise, I believe they're about the same level. But when it comes to like flight dynamics and stuff like, um, what's it called, the uh, flare logic and all that, then the TOLIS does have all that installed. And earlier on streaming as well, I believe there was an A320 pilot streaming this aircraft, which did also like go through all the systems there and did agree that the aircraft isn't too bad rendition of that. So compared to the Aerosoft, I think this one does take over the Aerosoft in a fair few ways. Five buttons that 
that work and the rest of my dummy buttons. It is nothing like the Aerosoft. As you said, it's better. Fine. Aerosoft's better. That's not. Now. This plane is almost every single way better than the Aerosoft. They can't hear you because you're the microphone, but hey. They still hear each time. Fair enough. Anyway, back to your cage. Yeah, I can hear my head Back to your cage in the corner. <laughs> Taking over it for the stream. Again, my room's almost ready. Actually, in fact, the furniture arrives tomorrow at 7 a.m. So 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. So tomorrow, once I've done my course, I'll be fitting that. Then no. And then tomorrow, whilst you're at school, I'll be sorting out this pile. I don't plan to. Like I said, it'd probably just be easy to do when you're not here. That way I've got a bit more of a free pass and not disturbing you in any way. Here. Don't plan to. So, um, yeah. By tomorrow, that pile, most of it should be gone. There might be one or two things that I don't have at home yet, like a second bit of shelves. Out the window. Snowing out the window. That's the point. Like, you know, Alaska's in this <laughs> Yeah, Alaska's going to have some snow nets. Welcome to stream, Norwegian Captain. Sorry, I've fucking ignored you there. I do apologise. Welcome to the stream, um, Norway. Or, or, or the max. So yeah, welcome to stream. How are you doing today, Norwegian? How are you doing? And if I have a quick look at uh, that or what? And then I just give myself a bit of a. Uh, Update to where I am right now, so yeah, I'll probably be like the... Oh, there's actually a few aircraft in Alaska right now, not too many. So yeah, that one's me. Um, if MDG starts making Airbuses, it would be amazing, even like this one. Um, PMDG are... Yeah, I don't think PMDG are really going to make any Airbuses, at least not for a very long time. Basically, they are quite close to... Uh, Boeing, when it comes to like getting the licensing and actually getting an aircraft leased out, to like scan the cockpit, and make sure everything is accurate. So I don't think I'm going to Airbus just yet. Um, how would you play this with a GTX 745? Oh no! Again, the specs in the description are wrong. That's my normal PC. Basically, I'm now on my brother's PC, who is a toeless um, debug tester guy. And at some point, probably just after the stream ends, I'm going to go back to the description. I'm going to make sure that the uh, specs are all correct and sorted out. I do apologise, the specs below at this stage of time are incorrect. When the stream ends, and when it comes like, to people watching this after I've streamed, after it's like, stored and stuff, then it'll be correct. So, if you're watching this live, ignore that at the moment. I'll fix it ASAP. Um, you'll buy this too, but... Um, okay. Is the A319 worth it? Um... Personally, I don't think it's too bad. It looks good, the systems are there, and in some fact places it actually does beat the uh, flight factor in terms of like the uh, systems it does model and all that. So, uh, is it worth it? Again, it depends. At the end of the day, I think, as it always says, the argument is, do you want to fly an A320, or do you want to fly an A319? Whatever one you prefer is the one that I think most people will probably go and buy, because the flight factor did release a couple of weeks ago, in terms of the modelling quality and all that kind of stuff, the same developers worked on the flight factor as the TOLIS, the modeller and the um, the uh, actual person behind who made himself, Mr. TOLIS, who I can't say his name for legal reasons. But um, yeah, it depends which one you want to fly. Uh, what are your specs? I can go get someone who can tell you that in just a second. Um, is it more FPS friendly than the Flight Factor 20? It's about the same level in terms of the um, frames per second, about the same level as the A320. Right, so this is the specs for this PC I'm on right now, which I'll be changing the description just after stream ends. It is an AMD R5 1400 overclocked to 4.2 GHz at 1.352 volts. It has got an RX 480 8GB overclocked to 1.3 GHz, 8 gig by one of course for three round wise. It's got a it's got four, eight gigabytes of DDR4 2666 extra fired up to that. It's two by eight channel, the two by four channel, and the above was a um, Asus Prime B fifty fifty four. Yes, send me on Discord. I can change the description later as well. Why not? Just fly.
by the air and stuff before the piracy lands. Because you want to satisfy the airplane. Yeah. So just basically, just send me the graphics card name and the RAM. Basically, look at my description. And copy and make it my system. And then just yeah, do that. Okay, so I'll write not a Dell. <laughs> there you go. This had no file base in it. I opened up this and it had no file base at all. Oh yes, basically. So um, I bought a Dell refurbished unit, and um, for a few whiles it was like tur um, turbo throttling. Uh, turbo throttling. That's it. Heating issues out the box. No, turns out there was literally just one little tiny dab of a. Uh, on the corner of the CPU, dial. not even on the CPU, dial, it was on the edge of the IEHF. So there's physically no thermal paste at all in that thing, yeah. which caused it to basically it suffer. It was instantly gone. Someone did, did the installation on the uh, heat sink, so it's the thermal paste away from the CPU and off to the side. Hang on, there you go. So, uh, will you post a link for the bus, please? Um, I, sure. I can do that in a moment. Right, we'll get the link pasted in just a second again to the chat. And do I? Um, yes. Okay, so Tolis is going to be doing the version two of the Flight Factor A350. I have get. To, I'm still working to see if I get involved. In it. I may be involved, may not be involved. It's still up in the air whether I can get into that project too. But um, Flight Factor's A350 is basically a QPAC. Seriously, look into it. Even on the QPAC websites, the RW designs and the Flight Factor 350, those are QPAC planes. They just have a different brand publisher onto it. They just. It's like how the Airsoft works. With their CRJ. It's made by one company, just published it under a different name to get a bit more sort of notice on it. Although, one thing I do want to say, because you actually talk about the A50 stuff, actually, one thing I actually don't know yet will it be a free add on, a paid add on, or is it like a separate kind of thing? How will it work? So, that is still up in the air, we don't know for sure. So we, at the moment, I'm expecting it's just going to be a free update for version 2 or how flight makes it. So, it'd be sort of like a, a cheap discount for if you had the old one. Or it's a bite from scratch, basically a cheap update, sort of, how they would do with conversions. So, to it, most factors. likely you'll be able to set from model on the Eggplane at Org Store. Likely, sort of like, we say it's like an update package for it, like the Flight Factor 757s and, and 757 Extended, so. Please make it great again. I'll trump it for you, don't worry. I'll trump the old one. Back to your cage. Oh. Here's my room still. <laughs> so, like I said, if there's any questions and any that I don't know the answer to, and want an actual tester to know the answer to, let me know and I'll bring him back out of his cage again. But things aren't looking too bad. Our ETA go 2247 Zulu, so a bit of a later flight, hey? That um, shouldn't be too bad. And like I said, if time needs it to be, we can then go for a bit of a jump cut, kind of skip to a few waypoints. Because I believe, as I've been told, it's a feature of the aeroplane. Well, that's not actually been tested yet too much, but um, yeah, we'll see if that works or not. Anyways, let's actually have the sea about sign for ages. Whoops, could have done that ages ago. Ooh, I hope that doesn't do anything wrong. Or have I just killed? Ah, it's just a pack fly, that's fine then. Um, it's just in temperature, so if I quickly turn off the seatbelt sign. Um, I have it, but I don't like missing the Sid Stars waypoints and holding waypoints. The fly- oh right, the, the um, A50, yeah. So, um, where am I from? I'm from London in England. So is he. And, um, yeah, so I believe this aircraft does have all the holding points. This does have all your, uh, SIDS and STARS, as this comes out of the, uh... So SIDS and STARS comes out of the X-Plane database. That all, um, gets defined through there. And then this also does include your holding points and all that. And earlier on I said that, uh, actually Wave 320 pilot was streaming this aircraft. And, um, he was quite... He basically gave his, like, thumbs up, his seal of guarantee for the, uh, tow list. So it's not too bad if it has that. Uh, just buy the airplane now, should I wait? I'm gonna buy it one day. Um, again, that's really up to you. I mean, can your piece, can your system handle it? And how much do you want it? Are basically, like the two questions. I mean, fair enough, it's gonna get a fair number of updates in the future to make sure like, everything is running smoothly. But, um, it really depends on how much you want it and how much you're gonna use it. Those are the two just main things. One hour past you, yeah, fair enough. So what, you live in Norway yourself, or where else do you live? Ah, I come to London in a few days. Um, Kilo Charlie Hotel. That is... Echo Charlie... Echo Kilo. Echo Kilo, I don't actually know. Hmm. Hang on, I should know it. 
I mean, I do know for a fact that Echo Kilo is an airport. Well, Echo Kilo as a char as a country, sorry, is going to be. Hang on, Echo Kilo is Denmark. Right, so yeah, you'll be in Copenhagen then if it's a uh, Charlie Hotel, Copenhagen. And um, you live in Norway, yes, fair enough. So I've got a Dane and I've got a Norwegian watching this. What a shame. I've always preferred the Finns. <laughs> nah, I've got a few Finnish friends. But they're not Scandinavian, to be fair. It's one thing that you guys excel at, being Scandinavian. But um, yeah, there you go. EK KCH is Copenhagen. Um, Adio 50, hope you free fee too. Again, that's for them to decide. So from what I could hear, it's going to be like a small cost to upgrade. But um, again, that's for them to decide, not me. I'm just here to make the videos. So if you guys want to see any of the models as well, then feel free to ask. So if I quickly go exterior view, zoom into the engines. I mean, like I said, there's a few customization options you get in the aircraft. So if I go to the toilet screen, move that. Okay, can't move that to the side yet. on free cam. I actually don't know how the airplane camera works. Basically you've got different engine types and the uh, chocolates. Um, so if I quickly go to uh, Tolis. So that's CFM with standard winglets. Can I go for IAE with sharklets? As you see now I've got the uh, sharklets with the IAE engines. You can also hear the uh, massive drop in power with the IAEs being a much um, weaker engine out of the two. So if we go back to your auto config, then basically auto config is like the standard what does the aircraft have in real life, which um, is actually a nice feature and does depend on which texture you use. And there you go, you've got yourself some nice little scenery for the uh, Toyota Safety 2019. <laughs> there we go. As always, bringing the uh, nations together with my super high quality, no questions asked live streams. So, how are you guys doing right now, actually? So, I know what you two talking in chat quite a lot. I know there are eight people are watching on YouTube right now. And according to Twitch, I've got a further. Have you even watched on Twitch right now? Again, I'm streaming onto both sites, Twitch and YouTube, as I always do, since people do seem to like that stuff. So, two views on Twitch, eight on YouTube right now. How are you all doing?
And if the link gets posted, it should have been on chat. Oh no, so basically if you go to the xplain.org um, web uh, store, there's like the first download on that. And then, um, yeah, if you do this, you just do a Google search for Tolis A319. And it should be one of the top links onto that. And there should also be plenty of links out online as well. And again, once stream ends, I'll go back to the description. I'll quickly add the uh, links to the aircraft as well. To all of the live streams I've done for this aircraft. From the first beta I did, which was like two weeks ago now, live streaming. To the stream now. I'll check how long to our descent. So yeah, now 360, I've been here for a little while. And we descend in about... 79, about 79 uh, nautical miles, so a fair bit of flying left to go for today. I lie, sorry. About 300, three, 400 nautical miles, so a lot of flying to go. There you go, so if you go to Twitch, you've got the um, link to the airplane over there. Store.oxplain.org slash tolis 319 p 762 html And that, my friend, is the link to the Tolis A319. Again, any questions you want to ask about the aircraft or anything you want to know about development, feel free to ask, and I am more than happy to answer them for you. I'm no certified pilot, but I know the verbs behind the aircraft, so hey, it's as good as you're going to get with me. Uh, go for it. Captain Matt. So, um, one, is the aircraft worth it? Uh, that's down to. Yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, one, is the aircraft worth it? Um, basically, again, it depends. As I think I keep saying, if you want an A319, toast to where it's at. If you want an A320, then it's flight facts you want. I think that's a big argument that everyone's going for right now. Oh, and the second argument is also starting to come out of nowhere. Are you rich? Flight factor. Are you poor? I think Tolis now become the... $20 cheaper. Yeah, Tolis now yeah. the poor man's A320. <laughs> I don't know where that came from, it just happened out of nowhere. If you think about it, I don't know why it came It's kind of like a... It's kind of like a... The MDG being the good 77 and the high flight. So neither plane is slow level. That is... The flight plane is slow level. Okay. Neither plane is slow level. The flight factor fanboys refuse to believe that really, they, but it, the pilot has gone through it, I actually just watched the stream, they are both not style level, both have got issues with it. This one just hasn't got as many systems as the flight factor, just got a bunch of bugs in it. They are both not style level. System wise they are both very similar and both, but it comes to flight dynamics this plane has the upper hand. So where it lacks in the system, which is the odd obscure one, it more than makes up for in the flight dynamics. Uh, next question is how to compare to flight factor some FPS, this plane is better. In Sort of term points it. So the flight factor has got a lot of plugins and they are quite heavy in your system. This plane's got one plugin that is worth doing anything and it is not going to do much on your system, it's all done really inside the sim. Basically, think of the Zybos 737, it's about that kind of level of yeah, um, my test power. Is sort of, it's very, it's sort of about within 5% similar to the Zybos 737 from the frame rates. And finally, um, yeah, he said it should be every 20 U of the FPS. Yeah, you. I uh, think that's quite a common issue, it's because how the plugins work. So if you have a, a sort of a low end CPU, so let's say even the i5 is getting issued even the high end i5 is getting chip. So if, got, if you have got 8 foot, uh, that's an R5 1400, so that's a 4 core 8 foot chip. If you haven't got 8 threads, you're going to have an issue. 6 threads you can get away with. With the new i5s, you can sort of get away with it just. But because of how all the plugins on the flat back work, you've got F X plane mode, which is an easy card for CPU we have, even more than that. So I've got a friend who's got an i5 44 something. 460 I believe it is. Okay. He has this chip. Okay, it's quite well done. It's got quite a good chip. But x plane happily will see an 85 to 90 utilization on that. Chuck in the flight facts, it just maxes the thing out. And that's not where you want to be. So really, when it comes to the, the system that works, your, your plugins have to run on the um, CPU. So there's no way, way around that. So that's why we've sort of try and get as little plugins as we can, make them one plugin do more than the other ones can. And that sort of has done easier workloads on the CPU. So, um, yeah, I hope that answers your questions, Matt. But I'd recommend an, an 8 thread chip like the R5 series or the i7s. Back to your cage. Oh, but it's cold and there's a weird man going, shouting, Oompa Loompa at me. Trying to feed me chocolate. 
Anyways, uh, welcome to stream Lucy Jane's. How are you doing today? Hang on, so you're having two problems, Norwegian. So the first set your side by 77 is something with the flaps where it's, it's moving. Where it's hang on, so where it's moving instance there's no animation and no call outs on the heights when landing. Here you go, so... Oh here. yes, that's because you're encoded. I recommend using your CPU to encode than your graphics card. I use CPU encoding, that works better on AMD. If you have an AMD chip, the CPU's H.264 encoder is a godsend. Intel's one and Nvidia's one are pretty crappy. So, try putting on the CPU and not the graphics card. Cool, so there you go. Matt's now going to buy the HP19, you've convinced them. Woohoo! My bank account won't change at all. And, um, yeah, he lose about 20 FPS, as you said. So, um, yeah, fair enough. That's my cage. That's your cage. The lumber guy. You get free chocolate. Again, I've nicked his room, so I'm on his computer with his setup, my microphone, and I've basically just stolen it. Whilst a, my room's out of order, being renovated, and b, um, yeah, uh, grand standing still. In your case, snow. Yeah, it's snowed quite hard. Now he's just closed. Same as Gavin and Pluton. But Stanton has not closed once so far this year. Yes. No, because Ryanair's got their own set snow system now. They've, Ryanair got so bored of so many delays, they have got their own snow system. They will go and clean the entire world in half an hour. Cool, so they've had flats used before. In that case, um. Oh, RG mod, um, what I recommend is not paying scammers. Yeah, do not go for. Right. Don't buy it. Get rid, get rid of the RG mod, not worth it. No, it's terrible. Reinstall Zybo. Hang on, can you repeat all the things but slower and louder? Yeah, I do apologise, he speaks too fast. Um, rewind lower stream speed. Basically, in short, Norwegian Captain, he's talking... It's down to the plugins and how they run. There you go. It's, the, the slow and bit, sort of a bit, the sort of a dumbed down version of it, short and hard, would be... It's down to how the plugins work, so on the flight factor, you have a lot of plugins doing a lot of heavy work on the CPU. So if you have a low-end CPU, like an i, even the I, high-end i5s, they get maxed out easily by XP and as it is. Add the plugins into the mix, and you max CPU. You can't do much, and you lose your frame rates. So with the, if I recommend for this plane, sort even the flat packs have a higher-end chip. So even an R5 has got eight threads, or an i7, because they've got now twelve threads or, or eight threads, depending on which generation you go for. So with all that, um, it's down to so the flat pack CPU just doesn't really work well. You've had too many plugins for it to work. The toe list doesn't have that issue before you've got one plug in the that does anything. Um, stability, I've not seen any crashes down to the plane. I've only seen a crash down to Orpho once. I've never had a crash other than that in this plane. Or x plane itself. x plane's a 920. Well, how are you surviving on that on that ancient, she's got a first gen i7. That's a, I believe that's a two core, four thread part. My laptop yeah, yeah. has got more power than that. How did you hit 4 gig? Hello, Captain Thank Matt. you for subscribing, Captain Matt. Much appreciated. How does one hit 4 gigahertz on a 920? I envy you. How are you? How is your CPU not cooking the entire room and blowing up your motherboard? Teach me your ways, Norwegian Captain. It's my VRAM. Oh, um, what you can... Oh, 3 gigs. What you can do is the TOLIS has a low resolution model. So we've got a, a normal and a high resolution for it. And that lets you sort of, if you have VRAM, you can use the lower sort of resolution model to get better performance on that. So yeah, four core eight threads. Yeah, you be, you should be. Uh, yeah, that's fine then. Four cores eight threads is. Minus 23. He's in uh, Norway. That's warm for Norway, isn't it? It's quite warm over there. Oh no, that's fairly cold at the moment, actually. Cause I believe... Not for Norwegians. No. Have you seen the memes on Reddit? Yes, but still, I mean, I've... Finland's currently at negative 15 at the moment, and that's that's actually quite... That's about average for this well, time of year. Well, let's say it's going to finish them off. No, so, okay, so it does have... Yes, so there's two models. You have the lower resolution... Um, and the high resolution. The lower resolution does not affect readability of anything, I don't not really, think. No, the textures on the rebids are unsettled. You've got two different textures, so you've got the back sort of texturing for the panel, which can be changed, and the writing won't change at all. You can get the same right, textures on the writing. 
It's just sort of the bits that aren't as important get lower resolution texture. Let's say the panel, for example. But the only downside is that's not compatible with my um, enhancement pack as of yet. I still have to make some um, things for it, so it doesn't really work. So you have to be stuck with the default blue Soviet textures for a while. You know, they're better now. They've been fixed quite a bit. They look a lot better than they originally did. But it still has you have to stick with those until I get some low resolution stuff working out the box. We shouldn't be talking. Expect that in version 1.2 of my enhancement pack. Version 1 be out some point soon with a few more tweaks and sounds. It's not out yet. Version 1's out, not 1.1 though. And 1.2 is about, let's say, about a week or two. Still need some final working techniques for that. Fair enough. Again, um, any questions, anything you want to know, just ask and we'll be happy to answer. Give me your money! Um, so the D in the Airbus is not actually that big, see the draw out table isn't that big at all, and there's actually anime on so there's no D in the same at all, sorry about that. Yes, he's, um, well he's not specifically a developer, he's a bug tester and livery textury so guy. It's so I'm not part of test, I'm part of Matt Designs, I am the sole person of Matt Designs, but Matt Designs have sort of during the stage of beta 2, we jumped in and decided to have a bit of a chat with, with some first people. Got quite a nice guy, he's a really nice guy, really great person, but I just decided to help out some doing some repaints for launch. Then I started being a bit more nosy and I started playing around the models. 85 feet long, Lucy. Anyway, so I started playing around some models in the thing, telling what they could do. Found a few f um, glitches here and there that no one even looked into, because I'm that guy who would just go and break it in every single way, shape, and form, because no one's going on. After that, I started doing some texture work on his plane. Then I started playing around some more things to learn what's going on. And eventually got to the point where basically I run the forums. Because I said he was never really that online for his job. I was always available. So we sort of had a, a game where I was run the forums while he wasn't wasn't around. So, so from there I started moving toward, more towards the Tolis side of things. To the point that now it's even on my LinkedIn account. He let me put him on, on his Tolis work. Uh, on it. just realised there's an issue with his aeroplane. What is it? No bird kebab stick. Um, yes, I do apologise for that. He's got some... I'm guessing he doesn't speak English too well. No, brain disorder you've got. Thanks. <laughs> now, I think, actually, I'm not going to lie. A few people have actually complained before that you speak too fast. Including some of the people in that uh, Discord group you're in as well. What, the um, Reddit one? No. The one that I'm also in. We did the uh, Euro Trucks uh, thing in. Oh, right. They've complained about it That's as well. Flies. Yeah, That's no, it. they do that all the time. So but no, on their server I speak faster even more just to annoy them. Okay, uh, I'm just going to be that again. They put the, okay, now the issue with that is that would not be legal, I'm assuming. I don't know what it's like in whatever country you're in, but I recommend getting a... Right, I'm changing the subjects now because okay, this is going too play. far for me. Mention it one more, you get banned. That's pretty much the limit. I don't ban Mr. It. FBI person, we do not condone with, we do not agree with this behaviour from little kids. What? Okay, Mr. FBI, I don't know. We know that, Captain Matt. Oh, hello, Matt. Hello, Matt. I'm a Matt. Yeah, again, I've had that a few times where my stream just goes off on some random topic. Is that because you're um, average you at ages 12? So we've had stuff from, we've got this, which I think is now the most uh, interesting. Yep. We've had my favourite, which was one time where the chat was going about how the Queen uses the toilet. Okay, and I think we're about eight now, aren't they? So, hello yeah. You, my chat sometimes fellows. randomly go off on one without me realising it. I think you get the AK and pull Eugene from the chat, but... I don't get that. Get the skip waypoint team, test it out, see if it works. We have never looked at this before, no one's bothered looking into it, so it may as well see if it works. Right, okay, so basically, right, how do I go to the skip Put waypoints? Right, basically, so what we're going to do now is because one thing is we need to cut down the stream length for a few reasons. Okay, it's his bedtime. No, it's so, early at 6 a.m. It's college. his bedtime, so what we're going to do is now quickly test the uh, waypoint Settings, skip. I believe, I don't know exactly where it is. There, jump 100 mark, mark, mark. So it's not a waypoint, it's just a jump. Like so if we jump, I'm going to mess up my that sim, but hey. God, and we do it at the moment if it doesn't crash. 
This is something that has never been tested before. Never been tested. And it works. Oh. The world hasn't loaded in yet, Mr. Perp. Hang on. MCDU, we can do it in a moment. But it works. You know, 100 miles ahead of where you were. Oh no, it has loaded in. Give me a second, I need to see how where I am and if I'm still on course. Everything is updated as so it should have. But that's my concern right now, so we are over the water. Yep, you're near Nome. Alright, okay, so things. Miles. Keep seeing what happens. Not yet. It worked though. So MCU tour. Right, I'll do the draw yet. He's had no idea what's in there, so let him do the tour. By the way, it does do I'm um, the pilot who looked on another stream, Black Box You just do it. He um, went for all, it's really impressive, more than I thought so. So, let's get that out. So we've got Slow down, from the top to left, Slowly. direct, which is just all your directs and where you, all your radios and stuff. Quite interesting stuff, all works. Your progress page, which this part here, the two part, does not function as of yet. At least not correctly, I don't know how to get it working. Performance, which is just your performance page and how it all works. Remember to set that before you let descend. Your initial page shows how to work. You got your load flight slam, which isn't allowed in the air. Data, which tells you all the information you need. Do not press that button, you'll break everything as you go. Flight plan, radio navigation, which just, unlike your Boeing, automatic. Exactly. Silence. Fuel predictions. You're landing at 10.35 at the moment. I recommend maybe another 100 miles, could fix that. No, not yet. Well, just call it anything working, so you get sort of banned. And that's pretty much how that works. In fact, those two buttons are just dummies at the moment, they don't function, that's just the menu key. So we'll just go through the landing setup, because that's what I actually have to tell you what to do. Okay, I'll do it for you then. Okay, so do you know where you want to land at? Yes, yes. Okay, what's the airport ICO code? Um, I have no idea, let me double check. It is UHMD. Right, UHMD. So now you've got metal, now we're going to use the flaps full, because it's a gravel runway. Don't want to break it. Fine. Then, you, let's see the here. So you've got the wind, which is complete cl um, class. So let's just do it zero at zero. Because I don't even know how to decode that. It's that broken. Temperature is... Um, what nav source does it have? Um, default X-plane. Yes, yeah, so these are default X-plane. Um, nav source and uh, flight plans and SIS and stars in the aircraft. And then you can use like update the default X-plane stuff to get to update the aircraft as well. Basically, the easiest way to implement it without lagging out the simulator and have everything work basically with the simulator without any issues. So yeah, it's minus four outside. We've got that there at the airport, and it's 388 if I remember the chart for the position height. There is all set up. Do not break anything, and don't worry. You have to land it by hand. Don't get that flare. That's off. fine. Remember, you have these numbers 100 miles to jump. We'll do it at some points. Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to jump, but, uh... Well, you do, because I'm gaffo. 6 a.m. get proposed every day, 6 a.m. Call in sec. I could. I get sick days. And at the end of the day, as long as he's not playing, then uh, you're fine. Is that muted? No. Okay, he is another person who's sick. Alright, so, actually, now that we skip... Now that we have... Yes, it does. <laughs> it will draw the light line to the next waypoint and it will work as it should. Right, you can't hear him. Basically, um, when you go to a direct waypoint, it does draw the line and everything will update as you. it should. So let's go direct straight to IC. Hit direct. If you look at the ND, it shows the drawn line where it should go to. It's all there, functional. Go back down, insert direct, and they got direct to IC. As it should, all works.
So when it comes to the TOTUS A350 upgrade pack, they expect it to be about six or seven months, but they haven't got a promise on that one. It's literally just a case of whenever it's ready, it's ready. But six or seven months, they'd like it. Um, does the LS function properly work with RNAV approaches? And does it create its own glide slope? The answer is yes. So if you watch my previous two live streams of this aircraft, the one, no, Okay, not the LARP and Ranta one, but if you look at my Gibraltar one, I think that one shows it best, where we did the um, uh, RNAV approach into Gibraltar, and then that one shows you like, how the uh, glide slope and is created. But the answer is yes, the LS function it does work properly within the TOTUS A319. Yeah, I do apologise by this time I'm going to put Lucy on mute now. They're basically just taking off YouTube videos. Do you have the rights to the YouTube videos? Yes, we have permission. Fair enough. And how about your Switch sounds as well? My ones that I did. My de uh, they're from a des uh, desk lamp. I'll put one from an aeroplane. Okay, yes. so interest. Some bits from a. Okay, so some things are from. So a Puskin's Cottage with a part of a Hawker Hunter, I believe it was, um, cockpit. So I got some sounds from there for some switches, and the other thing I got from my desk light on the other side of my room. This is the desk light for the um, large switches and the push buttons are switched off a Hawker Hunter. So there you go. Not artificial, they are recorded from the airplanes. 69 US dollar. There you go, 69 dollars or 50 pounds is the full <laughs> price for the Tadis A319 on the xplane.org store. For about 35,000 um, rupees. Cool. Systems that are not modelled, unfortunately, is something I don't personally have an answer for. All I know is that this thing isn't here, and this thing up here doesn't show the numbers, which is a feature that some A319s and 20s do have in real life. But um, otherwise, that's about it for my answers right now. I do apologise. Welcome stream Jagjets, how are you doing today? 
from Williamsburg, Virginia. Ah, fair enough. Not too bad. <laughs> real world corporate jet. Ah, oh, right, real world corporate jet captain. So, what do you fly A319 ACJ yourself, or which aircraft do you fly in real life? Welcome to stream gaming line, how are you doing today? How are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Ah, so you fly Cessna Citations. Uh, more like a generic um, private jet, but still quite a nice career to have. <laughs> Something I wouldn't mind doing myself, but unfortunately that's a career path way above on me now. The most I could do is maybe like a private pilot's license for a um, hobby. Can you show the cockpit night lighting? Um, that Do I really want to change the, uh, change the um, time of day in the flight, because I am on Vatsim right now, please do be aware. Um, I can turn on the dome lights and that kind of stuff if I wanted to, although in that case, Captain Matt, I'd recommend you check out the um, live stream I did on the, whoops, on the LARP and Ranta flights, the uh, nighttime flights I did, that one really showed off the uh, nighttime ability in the aircraft, so in this flight, unfortunately not, maybe when I come into land, maybe when I land I'll show it off. But I'm at a stage, unfortunately not. Ah, you rest jaguars. Okay, that's quite interesting actually. So um, yeah, like I said, I personally at most could probably go for a private's license, flying lighter aircraft in the UK, which is fairly simple to obtain if you can afford it. But um, yeah, something like that's a bit more beyond me. So, do you fly the um, CI 550 yourself, um, Jag Jets? There you go, yeah, 750 Mach.92. Uh, That's your answer right there. 0.92. Day 325 has hit Mach.1 has hit Mach.1.24. No, Mach so, why aren't these supersonic? Because it hit a mountain afterwards. Fast FS Labs. Well, we don't take it. We well for first. We don't have your documentation and your siblings in our system. You mean tell us don't record your passwords when you install their I models? Know, right? Isn't that an amazing thing? I know it's so rare, isn't it? It's such a weird position to not steal your new account. This is a door. This is my head. Cool. So um, again, so hey. Uh, no, it's true, but yeah, the A19 is not even close to half reason of FS Labs, although everyone's boycotting it right now. Um, hang on. No frame rates because I've got mine configured beautifully. No hits at all. So how you're seeing it on the stream right now is how I'm seeing it right now with and without OBS streaming. So, if um, you're dynamic in terms of dynamic lighting, then sort of. And no, my desk is pretty clean as it is, and I want it to be licked. Um, the 550, there you go, the 550, the most generic plane to ever been built. Everyone flies them. 
nice plane, but everyone flies them. Is there a good model you'd recommend on store? Caronado. Fair enough, really Caronado. Um, there you go, so yeah, 550, 500, 551, 552, 560, and then the XL, 650, and 750, okay. Any chance of a latitude or longitude coming into your fleet? Because they're quite cool, I think they look quite cool, the latitude and longitude, so they're pretty new planes. Or even the Citation X, is that on your list? Yeah, it is 750, it is. Cool, at this point, actually, we need something about the sending, because I've noticed my ETA is 25 past, which is now coming up to about not too long. MD, and miles away. Oh look, you're 100 miles away. I wonder what could be used to skip that 100 miles. Mm, whoops. <laughs> hmm, well you're 100, stop scrolling it, it's not a Boeing. We're not skipping, don't worry. You're 100 miles away, I know we could skip. No, we're not going to. Why not? Because I'd rather just fly last bit normally, I don't want that thing to be questioning why I'm teleporting across the sky. I have done once to pass Here's actually. Thing. This will be, same we'll be showing shortly on his, what, FF Passengers um, series. <laughs> oh yes. Except it's going to take about... And four times the no four way. times the length in a very small aircraft, and yeah, yeah, I'm just going to ignore. In fact, I'm going to just do the old-fashioned way. The, the full-on. That's what you did to me, isn't it? Yep. Right. So if I quickly go to filter YouTube, let's get rid of Lucy James. Lucy gets van hammered. Yep, you have been van hammered. Cool. So whilst you guys unfortunately will still be able to see Lucy's chat. I now can't, and also won't appear on stream anymore, so Lucy, for me at least, is now Dated. gone. I do apologise. So, um... What saying? Talking about, oh yeah, F Passengers videos. Yeah, so my FS Passengers series, I'm currently in the US. Eventually I'll be flying this part of the um, world. Now he's doing a real world tour on, like, another channel, which is like, <laughs> a world tour using the default 77 on FSX, he only got to five countries in Europe and gave up. And um, like I said earlier on as well, tomorrow is a very special day for flights and users, which marks the sixth, the sixth year anniversary of Microsoft Flight, the greatest the flight sim FSX to grace. Better sim than the new ones. So um, yeah, I'll do a few videos and streams on that tomorrow, which will be the sixth year anniversary of Microsoft Flight. Ooh, up there. Mar sixth year anniversary of Microsoft Flights. I know, that's what YouTube does when it's loading chat. It never loads, because it's rubbish. It's ruined. Would you throw it at someone? No. Are you abusing your fans by throwing phones at them? No. To be fair, I've never broken his phone screen before. You have. Let's I have my list. Should we go for my list? We've got time. <sighs> Google Next. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Is it worth $69? Yes. Yes, there you go. If you're poor and you can't afford a flight factor, then yes. That's what he was saying. Okay, so... Nexus One, the Sony Ericsson, you've got the, a granddad phone, another granddad phone, a Nokia um, brick, a 108, not 30 for 10 sadly. You've got a S2, some weird LG, I've got no idea what it, it was never that good. <laughs> does this for a a Weekitel um, U7 Pro, yes it's set on fire, it was Chinese. Uh, so it went for three batteries, but one set on fire. <laughs> I don't remember that one. <laughs> yeah, I never told you. Or anyone. I just bought enough batteries <laughs> down, no one ever found out. How do you set it on? Hang on, um, how Chinese. close are you to Old Warden? I don't... Do you have an ICO code for that? I can tell you how far we've done. Yeah, if you ICO give us the um, ICO code to Old Warden, we can check that for you in the um, so aircraft. Can, we can you just hit direct to that ICO code, not actually activate it, and just see how far it is. Awesome. Um, you have the FS... I had to stick FS Gen 1. Oh, okay. What's that? I'm going to quickly Google it back in a moment. Yeah, the stick FS Gen 1, that's old actually, it's not new to, too new anymore. So um, yeah, if you could give us an ICO code to um, Old Warden, we check how far that is um, for you now. Okay, find the nearest blender available and put the side stick in it head first and destroy <laughs> it. What? <laughs> what did she just Google? Here you go, um, Shuttleworth pageant in the fall, one of my favourite events. Oh right, he's basically a racing pilot as well. So, um, as well as a private jet, if Are we go up. There you go, race Jaguars and fly jets. Jaguars? That's in the fighter jet Jaguar or something else Jaguar? I've seen the fighter jet Jaguar. Well, it's going to be a little, it's a small Jaguar, it won't be a fighter jet Jaguar sadly. 
what's your um, composition name? Maybe look at some of your flying. What's your composition name? Check his channel out. Go on, YouTube. Check his YouTube channel oh, right yeah. now. Jagjet. Jagjet. There you go, your e name's packed in the flight bag in the car. Jag U R is probably his American 45. Yeah, has an American 45 years in type. Starting with the E type. Oh, okay. And yeah, that's at the uh, Shuttleworth pageant. Okay, that makes sense. So what are you doing right now? Like you laid over somewhere with your private jets or what are you doing right now? You're at home. Likewise, who do you actually fly around? Are you like a corporate pilot? Are you like a pilot for hire? How do you work? Um, ICO for Old Warden near Bills Wade is... Get rid of um, Lucy James as well. I'm terrible at this on so I keep accidentally clicking on other switches because the mouse wheel when I'm scrolling also clicks those as well. So we are descending in about 58 nautical miles. So not too long left until we now actually have to start descending into Provindinia Bay in Russia. There you go, pilot services and for hire by day, week and month. Ah, okay, so yeah, you are a um, hiring pilot. And are there any like companies you work for under? Any companies or you um self employed with your private jets? weather as well. The clouds are slowly building up around me, but that shouldn't be any cause of concern. It seems like quite high actually to clouds. As I do come into land, I also double check my weather as well. And then that will sort of out when we do come into land, which will be a more of a manual approach into the airport. Again, I've got no hope in probably landing this thing, being very much a Boeing pilot. And I've actually, I'm going to say it now, I've never used flare logic before. This will be the first time for me ever using flare logic, which will be interesting. Well, I know I just have to yank the thing back. When I do get low to the ground. But yeah, wish me luck with that.
yeah, the aircraft itself is a um, very nice model to it. Same model as the uh, Flight Factor 320 made by the same person. And the flood dynamics, uh, well the guy who developed it, Mr. Tolis, who again I can't name for legal reasons, he's a fly-by-wire mechanic in real life for an airline, I'm not allowed to mention. So um, yeah, like, as a career he's like, basically um, doing this as a job himself. And he does the Tolis A319 on the side. So if you remember QPAC and Aero 320, which was like going into development like 10 years ago now, basically he took the QPAC stuff, modified this and improved it, Use his knowledge as a fly-by-wire engineer in the real world to like make things better. And basically when it comes to this flight dynamics and the aircraft itself, it's a decent model. And I think people have definitely given it praise for its uh, dynamics when in the air. And it's fly-by-wire is basically on point. And already the autofly systems, they're on point, they're on point. So the uh, things that the Totus does include, which is the flight factor doesn't, it's like proper holding points and proper SIDS and STARS. So, yeah, this aircraft does have everything on point. And earlier on, during like a previous live stream by another person we were watching, a real life A320 pilot, he basically put the aircraft straight to the test and it basically passed with flying colours, no problems whatsoever. So, at this point in time, I think it's fair to say that this aircraft is probably as good as you're going to get when it comes to A319s and 20s in um, X Plane 11. And uh, supposedly no plans for the Neo just yet, but again, you never know as things may change in the future. It depends what the developers say, and um, if people really want it or not. But as it stands, it's decent aircraft. Like I said, it does come with your actual engines and wings modifying. So as you see, we've got the uh, standard winglets and the CFM engines. It is possible to switch it to the... IAEs with sharklets, as you can now see, IAEs with sharklets. But, um, nah, it does look quite nice, the model's quite customizable. But, we'll keep it on standard for now. As the aircraft in real life. Um, Airbus is a follow, um, on design from the, there you go, RPQ system on the Desktop Falcon. Oh, okay. I did not know that. I did not know that before. Again, I'm more of a Boeing pilot myself when it comes to flight sims and all that. But, um, yeah, I did not know that before.
boots. Right, so we've now hit our descent. Got that down to about 4,000 feet and then push it inwards. Why no. is it set to altitude 100? Don't know, don't care. Right, that's down to 4,000. Push it inwards. I believe actually it's already set it itself already. Click UHMD. Uh, UHMD. On the thing. Destination UHMD. Yep. Arrival. Arrival. It's set up now. There's no, okay, there's no arrival. Yeah, there's no arrival. It's flying manual. Yep. We're heading select. Thank you for <laughs> subscribing. <laughs> Adian, much appreciated. I have my volume up. It's quite high. It's mixed at its normal level. Um, this is the loudest my microphone goes. That's when we shout. So, um, yeah, I do apologise for that. This is loud as my microphone goes because it's not the most powerful thing in the world. I do need to get some phantom power for this. I'm currently using USB power on the studio microphone, which doesn't do the uh, job. Anyway, we've now started our descent. And we'll be landing shortly at... Pa I can't remember the airport's name. Um, <laughs> there you go. We're landing at... Um, Prov Provid... Provid... Denya, Providenia Bay Airport. Yeah, we're landing shortly. In fact, let me refresh this. I want to see how the uh, jump looks on that sim. You missed the entire airway, probably. There's a jump. There's a jump, so it's just giving me a back on his line. It knows I jumped, so it just doesn't know what happened in that time. It's fine. Anyways. We started descending now, so at this point we should soon think about uh, coming to land shortly. All I know is that I've got to fly between a valley and then. I don't actually know, that's what I'm asking. Fair enough, right, so if we zoom in. Now do for now, as the airport is coming to view at the moment, so there you go, our trademark Airbus nosedive um, descent, this aircraft does really bring itself down. Airbus is quite, it's quite, warm, it's quite efficient, it's, it's, it's sort of originated with that old Mercure, that plane sort of nosed down quite a bit just to do that due to the wings quite well designed. They think Airbus A320 gets a lot from the Mercure's design, it's just it's a lot better, it doesn't have a 100 mile range basically. Welcome to stream Bluffy Broadcast, how are you doing today? Um, have you tried the EADT 737 Uh sucks. No, I haven't. I'm quite happy it's with the... It's really, really bad. The Zyro is better in almost every single way. The EADT is both looks terrible, quite bad. My stream, terrible. not yours. Doesn't you said matter. you said you wouldn't be here, so... Yeah, no, I'm still going to play So, um, yeah, I've not used the EADT. Don't plan to. I'm quite happy with the uh, Zyro um, 737. Now passing through 313. Yeah, the aircraft will go in the end. So, actually, it'll probably be worth buying some charts for this airport. So, I guess you get an idea of where I'm coming into. But basically, for what I know, is once I get low enough, we'll bring it into manual heading. We'll use, use heading select and then fly through the valley heading to the runways. How's the new A319? It's not bad. It's not bad. I do like the um, Tose A319. It looks like an A319. It feels like an A319. It sounds like an A319. So uh, basically, the uh, systems and that kind of stuff built by an actual uh, corporate. Um, so yeah, he, the guy who designed like the flight dynamics and all that kind of stuff. Basically, um, and I must try it's brilliant. So I have for free. We'll see, we'll see. But um, no, the guy who like Mr. Tolis, who I can't name for legal reasons or name which company he works for for legal reasons. Basically, um, he like he does fly by wire systems in the real light world, and so basically decides to put like his spare time to the A319 project. So um, it looks on point. It feels on point. I've got no real complaints with this aircraft. It looks the job. It does the job. So we will be landing in the next 20 to 30 minutes. And then now bring to the end to the stream. Um, is it an FPS leader? No, not particularly. So if you have the 737 Zybo mod installed, 
then it's going to be about the same um, frames as that. So not really a killer, as it only uses a single um, plugin, and the model itself tries uh, to look lower it down in like any way possible and plus for those who do have a low end system you also get a, uh, a low quality model and textures also to install which is like a FPS um, saver if you need it so this is the external model it does look the job thank you for subscribing Bluffy much appreciated so here's the external model it looks good it does the job and likewise for those who want it you can also customize it with IE engines and sharklets. So, it, yeah, I've got no real complaints for this. It's a good aircraft. It does do um, well. Sure, no worries, Jack. I do hope to see you again in the future. But no, it's nice talking to you, definitely. Right, so our landing config has now been set. And um, at this point, now it's carrying on our descent. We'll soon pass 245. And uh, at some point, like I said, I don't want to try and get another quick weather update at our airport's prom... Uh, gosh, I still can't pronounce the name. Um, yeah, get a weather update at our departure our destination airport, Providinia Bay. Which is the uh, eastmost um, airport in Russia. Uh, it doesn't look better than the Zybo in my opinion. The Zybo is a default 737. This is a Payware A319, so two separate aircraft. I oh, just bought the Tyler 19. Well played, Lucas. Hope you enjoy it. I do hope you enjoy it. So if I quickly zoom in on the um, display here. And then I can start focusing on my approach into the airport. There so time now GMT is 18 past 10. Basically here in the UK, 18 past 10 and 20 seconds. And yeah, things aren't looking too bad as we now carry on our descent through the clouds. I do want to check what the um, cloud altitude is, so we can do a quick up weather update at um, Pramadinia. The um, ICO code is uh, unif whoops, D whoops, WX. Oh, I can't type today, so my life. Um, uniform. Uh, where's the U? There, uniform hotel. India Delta. Sorry, Mike Delta. All right, so um. Yeah, that's a weird, weird wind speed. That's visibility 1000. Okay, so it's not great visibility one kilometer. Although, if no um, stars are coming to land, that'll be fine. While stream fire with John, um, I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad today. How about you, John? Welcome to the stream. Right, so we've now got 80 viewers on YouTube and on Twitch. We now have a total of. Hang on, how many viewers are on Twitch? Uh, just one on Twitch at the moment. So, um, yeah. Welcome to everyone to the stream. How are you all doing today? I hope you're enjoying it so far. Ah, so you've bought the um, Tyus as well. 
nicely done, John. Hope again, just like I said to Lucas, hope you do enjoy the uh, Toyota Safety 19. It's good aircraft. I'd put my support behind it, so I do hope you guys enjoy it. You know, like I said, I've got no real issues with this at the moment. It's nothing to out the uh, ordinary. It looks the part, it feels the part, it basically does the part. Thank you for following, uh, John, there you are. And one thing I'm going to look for quickly is the uh, terrain, there you go, terrain on MD. That will basically tell me where the airport is when I do come to land, which is something I do need to know. There you go, nice simple turn on, hopefully that should be good enough for me to land. Basically I need to fly over through the, um, sure no worries John, I'll see you over on Twitch. So yeah, I will need that to be displayed when I do come to fly through the valley, again on manual. Shouldn't be too bad. We'll see how that goes. We're passing through 12,000 though, so at this point I now need to get myself ready for landing. Make sure that's all been configured and set. Thank you for following Clements, much appreciated. Then once you that load down, then you start slowly the back pressure and then engage worse first. Cool. That's flare basically law isn't tricky. Cool. That's my quick crash course into flare law, something I've never done before. So I can now see I need to make a left hand at some point because looking at the uh, uh not show the map. Um, there we go. Right, so I can see the valley, which is about here. You can fly it that way around. Come over and then hard left and come in. So I recommend turning right a bit to work from that mountain back. Right, so heading, if I now do that. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. Well, much appreciated, Lucas. So, what I'm now going to do is make a right turn, and instead of coming in through the valley through the west, we're now going to come in through the east instead. I mean, I actually can say that the west actually looks a bit of an easy approach. It's just yeah, but you don't, the reason for that is I want, to, I want you to do a hard left turn without breaking um, the flight profile. Right, okay. Now, Timus needs to be set to 1025. So I'll quickly set on both sides now. Whoops.
I believe that's as close as it gets. Then you just end most of your turn. And you sort of also one last thing. Um, grab a runway, no auto brakes. So you use manual brakes if you can't find one. Whoops. No okay. You have no more flaps. That's fine. Um, how long does it take to download the aircraft? 25 minutes. 25 so minutes. Oh, yeah, it's very true. So you go for about five or six minutes. 2,000. So terrain, you terrain. No flaps. So it's a bit for you. Terrain, sure. terrain. Yeah, don't be a joy and don't terrain, break your terrain. flaps. Uh, what's. Terrain. So at this point, what should you do? It's saying terrain. Terrain alarm. Now off. And you can't see a thing, so you're probably going to hit a mountain quite soon. Failures and they can fix the failure because someone broke the Again, flaps. I don't know the speeds in this aircraft at all. So it that says, the same as Boeing says as well. Fair Boeing, enough. Oh, 300 knots lower the flaps. Name one plane. The Concorde. Didn't have flaps. It does now. It did that one time. No, that was a plant in general. <laughs> uh, there's a the Concorde that crash that happened. And the flight the point was the flaps, not the hole in the wing. Right, so. Fix all system. Whoops. Wait for it. So very slow system, this. Explain. Explain to. Okay, it's about half an hour left for you. Okay. Fix systems. Flaps now work. Don't lower them until it says F or F on the, on the speed tape once you get to it. Keep an eye on the DS. Are those spoilers? Yeah, just pull those back. And at some point, I've got to make a left turn. Though I don't it's want to. Side. I haven't got that side stick. I know. So not hold it from the bottom. One That's more concern is more. The issue is with flaring. I know. But I'm just hoping there's no mountains currently ahead of me. You see on the PFD there isn't any. So turn to the left two five zero. And there it goes. Now I can do flaps one. Um, two thousand. Not yet. You can tell me I'll do flaps. That green dot. Oh yeah, is that the flaps? That's like put, that thing flaps down. That's the speed limit. Cool. Okay. Now I know. Once you get turned, you put flaps one down. The faster you go on flaps four is one hundred and eighty though. Once you go below one hundred and eighty, you're fine. So are we turning? But not by much because the map is a mountain in the way. Right, okay, that makes sense. So it'll be a very hard left turn coming, I can tell you that for a fact. Oh, yeah. Not going manual. Are oh, you manual? Are we? Yep. You're manual. Now you're now put back on. That's one. Ooh, this is definitely going to be an interesting landing. It's clouds, it's water, it? clouds yeah. raining. Yep. There we go, so um, this is going to be an interesting landing. So, visibility of the airport was 1,000 metres. As long as it's over 61, you still fly it digitally. Cool. Again, there's no um, there's no instrument landing systems, no RNAVs, no nothing at this airport. No nav aids. Physically, this airport basically doesn't exist. Apart from those VORs and that waypoint. 2,500. You're not Flaps down. And then when you get to the F, see that? Yeah. That's full flaps. Cool. The vehicle come down and you're flying over to the other way, directly overhead. You want to turn right below the valley and then swing around that hill. Gear down. Right. See that hill? Yeah. You want to come over like that. Cool, okay. Over the hill. Makes sense. And now I'm going to leave you in there. We'll not come back until you crash. Well, if I land, though. You won't, you'll crash. Fair enough. Because you have never flown from before. Nope. Flying it blind. Yep. So when you go, when I walk one tenth of it, that's about 2,000 feet. Right turn to pull it. So you're actually going to send that down. Right, so down to 3,000. And there you go, now four flaps can go set. Look at the exterior as I come into land. And at this point, I do now need to focus because one small mistake could spell the end of this one. So make another right turn quickly just to avoid the mountain coming up. Thousand five hundred. Slow it down steps, just so I can get the aircraft at least below the cloud layer. Oh, cool. 
vehicle autopilot is disabled again. There we go, coming to the bottom of the clouds now, so that should mean I'll be clear. Clouds just to my left. So a mountain to my left, which I can see on the um, display, which I do need to avoid. There'll be a left turn, swing into the airport, and come into land. <laughs> Wish me luck, guys. Again, I'm fine with no experience. I've never flown with Fair Logic before. This will be fun. Uh, what's the difference between high def and standard def? It's the um, texture on the aircraft. So if you have like a poor system with like not so great FPS, go for standard def. If your system can handle like high quality modeling and all that kind of stuff, then you should be alright with the um, high def models. All right, left hand to 200, bring it down to 2000. And that should be below the um, cloud layer for me. Enough for me to see where I'm going as I come into land. There we go. So now at 2000. This now flies in manually. Just keeping auto throttle on. Right, there's the mountain, so I need to avoid that. Through the gap here. And there's the airport down below, so another steep descent coming up. Airport is now in sight, so we've got a very sharp left turn coming up. And now guide us into the airport, so we'll use this uh, slightly lower bit of cliff here just to guide us down. Without increasing too much speed, and so yeah, load of throttle and speed brakes out. GPWS, ground proximity warning system. Cut it close, but it's fine. Airport's not in sight. <laughs> Keeping it close, but hey. Gosh, this airport really is invisible. Right, I think I'm have to go around and try and find it again because I physically cannot see this airport. And I definitely cut it a bit fine with the ground there. Uh, the airport is to my right. Oh, that's a missed approach. So go around and we'll try that again. So we'll fly it around the valley. Now he's bringing the aircraft more to the uh, left. And this, my friends, is what we call in trade spatial disorientation. I have no idea where we're going right now. They go flight limited, auto throttle limited. So, bring the aircraft to the left again. I think I'm going to go for the much longer approach, giving me more like an idea to think about where I'm going. So, I make a left turn down the second valley and follow the river down to the uh, coastline. Yeah, 
1,500 on the um, altitude there. Heading wise, let's do that, shall we? Terrain, 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 terrain. That's fine, we'll clear it. Gosh. <laughs> it's like a horror movie this now at this point. There you go, up above the clouds, let's try that again. Right, so I know that cloud cover now ends at 1,500. So if I now head out towards the sea again, we'll try to approach a second time, but this time giving me a lot more time to actually act on the um, weather. Cool, that's fine. Yeah, apologies for the first landing attempt. Moves across the second one, we be bit, just a bit nicer. So I'm going to bring it out to the uh, far end of this valley, and I'll bring it in a more of a straightened approach, opposed to the uh, hard left turn at the end. You can see the mountain to my left there. I'd like to avoid that. Yeah, just preferably avoid it. Flats and gear again. And then say, bring this thing around the valley again for a second landing attempt. We're at 2,100 feet, nice and stable this time. Again, one thing I prefer about the Boeing as opposed to the Airbus is on the um, MCD, not sorry, the um, PFD, I'm going to about uh, zoom over 5 as opposed to 10, 5 nautical miles ahead of you as opposed to 10, so at least visually get more of an idea where you are at. So if we bring the aircraft around again, altitude, hold it. Don't remember this, do you remember this is an unlit runway? With no nav aids or anything, so again, bring it to the left and then level it off now. Speed, speed. You know, at this point, I'm now basically flying like a Boeing pilot was full manual on the throttle on the stick. But now, at this point, I'm just really focused on getting this thing down now. So, as soon as the runway is available, and as soon as the runway is visible, now 900 feet, which is fine, I'll take that.
And do remember that my alternative airport is where I've departed that, at Anchorage. So, um. 500. Yeah, that's not really going to be an option for me. I've ne this has never been so stressful landing an aeroplane. Not for me, at least. Not in a long time I've felt this stressed out trying to land an aeroplane. Again, an aeroplane I have no knowledge about, so when I can barely fly. There's the water. So now if I can try and find an airport from this water, that would be grateful. That's fine. <laughs> we'll take that. Now, where is this airport? Don't sink. Too low terrain. <laughs> this airport can't sink. We just tested that. Too low terrain. There it is. Alright, let's bring this thing down, shall we? Gosh. <laughs> um Fair enough. Well, we made it, technically. I mean, no visibility at all. I have no idea where I'm going in an aircraft I've never flown before. This we touched down at um, Promedia Bay. Provendinia Bay. I mean, at the end of the day, like I said, this is a stream for Tolis, and I did warn him that I would probably do this, so... Take what you will from this aircraft. I mean, I won't defend this landing with it. I'll just call it a standard Tolis landing. But, um, no, fair enough, yeah. Bit of a heavy touchdown that. He chose the airports, he chose the airports, so it's his fault at the end there if he wants to moan about it. But um, we made it. We can walk away from it, I guess. In fact, if we go to Tolis. Can we open the exit still? Yes, you can, so... There you go, exits are open. <laughs> We made it, I'll take that. Normally I'd be in a much nicer landing, an aircraft actually understand, but at the end of the day, what can I say really? So, um, Wait. yeah. Let's get the replay. But first, can you clear that alarm? It's clear the alarm, and also you want to quickly close the doors as well. Nope, you don't need that, you're the evacuating. Let's go. So, replay mode. It's going to be way too far, and the chat's in the way, so you just want to move chat out of the way. Uh, there you go, that'll do it. Yeah, you had a fun flight. Again, no idea where the airport was. They are coming in. Now, what you did there, Andrea, was stall. I know. He didn't tell me stall, but... Stall and Airbus. He didn't even tell me stall, to be fair. I one... Here's what he did. He came in here at how far? You broke the <laughs> down <laughs> down. <laughs> on those. Ah, he's what we can check. Data output, speed. Oh, okay, I should realize that. Doesn't work on your phone, never mind. You Shit. came in, too hard, you cut, you bombed out suspension, as you can see. Go back to your crash in slow motion. You came in. Okay, so far so good. You could have put power in and left it level, and it would have just leveled itself out and hit the ground quite so hard, but not damaged it. Because you pulled, you locked up, bombed suspension, I hit the engines. Damaged the wing structure from that point, which then damaged the body of the fuselage, causing an accident to occur. So, um... Expect more to yeah. enjoy it then. That's the Tolis A319. This is exactly how it works, as you would see. So, um, yeah, like I said, take from it what you will. 
but that is the end of the stream today so i hope you guys in <laughs> so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the stream leave a like if you did do subscribe hopefully by sunday i'll be in my 737 which i do know how to fly but um yeah i think i'll probably give a little break for the a319 since i've just been hammering streams out for this recently and uh yeah it's out now it's out now it's $69.99 50 pounds uk or 20,000 for indians and um yeah you guys enjoy the stream leave a like if you did like i said do subscribe or do follow me on Twitch as well. And I will see you guys next time. Uh, goodbye.